The millennial generation is facing money challenges and opportunities like no other before them. In this video, I'll share a complete plan for millennial investing from stocks, bonds, and real estate to some of the mistakes that will crush your dreams. I'll then reveal how much to invest to become a millionaire millennial by the time you reach 55. We're talking investing for millennials today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. More than half of our growing Bowtie Nation is in that 24 to 40 millennial age range and I love that we're able to reach some of the younger viewers. You've got some amazing opportunities ahead of you and I know you hear it so much that it really doesn't mean anything, but I want to help you create that future. I found some research on the average retirement savings by generation and this is really why I wanted to do this video. Baby boomers aren't sitting so great with just over $135,000 saved for retirement, but it's really my generation, those Xers that surprised me. Not sure what the hell happened here, but 30 grand is not a good place to be a couple of decades out from retirement. So I wanted to catch all you millennials while there's still time. Take advantage of that time you have left and help you build up your nest egg. For all my fellow Xers out there, don't worry, I'm putting together an emergency 911 video to show you how to invest if you're, if you're just getting started later in life, so watch for that. Today though, I'll cover a millennial investing strategy for stocks, bonds, and real estate, show you how to get both safety and higher returns by using all three. Then I'll show you some of the investing strategies outside the stock market, some ways to get a little higher return. We'll talk about the biggest mistakes millennials make with their investments and then I'll give you a complete investing plan for a million dollar portfolio by the time you reach 55 years old. Now first though, I want to throw this out to the community, uh, see where everyone is at. Now, what age were you when you bought your first share of stock uh, or have you even invested yet? Kind of an informal poll so scroll down and tell us in the comments below how old were you when you bought that first share of stock or, or if you're just getting started now how old are you now? now i want to start off with some basics on stocks bonds and real estate and why you need all three and frankly a really surprising chart that's going to prove that point now i've put a clickable index in the video description below if you want to jump ahead to other parts of the video but one of the best lessons you can learn in investing and not learn it too late is the power of investing across those big three asset classes so here I'm talking about stocks, bonds, and real estate. Now, asset classes are just broad groups of investments that react in similar ways to the economy. Okay, for example, bonds are fixed cash flow investments that, that do great when interest rates fall or when the economy weakens, but not so much when the economy is booming. Stocks, on the other hand, do well when the, with that hot economy, but they crash hard in a recession. Now, the power of investing in all three of these, and I'm going to show you a simple way to do that next, is that you get all the benefits while smoothing out the risks. The money you have in bonds and real estate protects you from that market crash. Your stocks provide that upside opportunity and the bonds produce cash flow to reinvest. And all you have to do is look at this chart. This shows the value of a portfolio completely invested in stocks. That's the blue line over the 13 years from 2007. Now sure, stocks are up nearly 180% over the period, but that 49% loss in the recession broke a lot of investors. They panicked, they sold out of stocks and never got to that rebound. Now look at that other line. This is a portfolio of 55% of the money in stocks, 25% in bonds and 20% in real estate. Was it still down in the recession? You bet your ass, but that 33% loss looks a hell of a lot better than 50%. And for that added level of safety, you would have only given up about 4% return over the entire 13 years. And that chart doesn't even show the benefit of rebalancing. Now that's when you adjust your portfolio by selling what's expensive and buying what's cheap. If, for example, in the 2009 crash, you could have sold some of those bonds to buy stocks at bargain basement prices and made an even higher return than that all stock portfolio. Now, the best part of this, though, is that you can get all your bonds and real estate investments just like you do stocks. Exchange traded funds or ETFs are investment funds managed to hold a group of assets like this Vanguard long term bond fund. That's ticker BLV. This one holds 2300 individual bond investments. You can buy that fund on any stock investing platform and have those bonds help protect you from the worst in stocks. Now, I also have direct investments in real estate through Fundrise and rental property, but you can get all you need from these easy exchange traded funds. Now, the percentages of your money in each of these asset classes is going to change as you age. You're going to want a little bit more in stocks and real estate. So maybe those of you still in your 20s can start with upwards of 65% in stocks, 20% in real estate, and maybe 15% in bonds. As you invest through your 40s, that number might shift to 60% in stocks, 20% in real estate, and maybe 20% in bonds. 
Now these are slow decade long changes though, so not something you have to worry about right now. Now I wanna show you a couple of investments outside the ordinary, you know, investments with a little bit more risk, but potentially a lot more return than what you're gonna get in stocks. The idea here is that because you've got a lot more time to invest, your tolerance for risk is gonna be higher. You can invest in some of these higher risk investments and even if it takes a while, they'll produce those much higher returns. Now the first one is something that we've talked about on the channel a few times before. This is futures investing. Now futures are investments that you make on commodities like oil, gold, and even currencies like investing in the US dollar against other currencies. The reason why futures offer so much higher return than just simple stock investing is because you're usually using leverage of 20 or 30 times your money. For example, I was buying futures contracts on oil in 2016 with about 10,000 in my account, but I was buying an investment worth $135,000, so about 13 times leverage on my money. That meant the price of oil only had to rise a few percent and I made over 20 grand in just a few months. For more on how to invest in futures, I'll put a link to the video on that strategy that I used in the description below this video. Another high risk, potentially high return investment that millennials might consider is investing in Bitcoin or some of the other digital currencies. Now, I've invested in Bitcoin myself off and on since 2019 and I have no doubt that we will see another Bitcoin bubble eventually where earlier investors can see some massive returns. But it took years for Bitcoin to do much of anything and it could be years again before we see another opportunity like that. So unless you know how to value these coins for that shorter term trading idea, then this one's best left for those decades to spare. Now before we get to that investing plan for millennials though, I want to cover two of the biggest money mistakes and then how to avoid them. And this first one might not seem like much of a mistake, but believe me, when you're looking back 10 or 20 years, it's going to seem like it wrecked your entire financial life. I'm talking about just not getting started investing. And I understand the problem, I do. The average millennial graduating college has almost 30 grand in student loan debt and not much to save. Even if you don't have that student loan debt holding you back, it's still never easy squeezing savings out of a tight budget. That's why I recommend saving just $50 a month to start. If you're not saving right now, just put aside $50 and open an investing account. Even if you're still paying down debt, get into that habit of investing something every single month and it's gonna mean all the difference. Even if you're never able to invest more than that $50 a month, it can grow to over $220,000 by the time you retire. So not too bad for skipping just one night out a month. Now, if you're not sure how to get started, I've got a five minute quick start guide on opening an investing account and buying your first share. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below, but it's super easy and it's gonna have you investing literally in five minutes. The second mistake I see, and this is really from new investors of any age, but they fail to prepare for emergency expenses. Now what happens is you start investing, you're excited, you're saving everything you can after paying those bills. Then your 12 year old Camry decides to blow up and cost you $2,500 for a new suspension. Without an emergency fund, you have to sell some stocks and take that out of your account. And it's not just about taking this money out, which is bad enough, but that it kills your motivation to save. You see your portfolio value plunge and it feels like you're going nowhere, so you just stop saving. Pretty soon you're 60 and you're wondering if you're ever gonna be able to retire. Now this is something that we'll talk about in our investing plan next, but it can be as easy as just having a couple of thousand dollars in a savings account or some other emergency fund. But let's get to that investing plan and looking through the numbers, it can be surprisingly easy to become a millionaire by 55 if you just get started. For example, starting at age 25, you only need to invest about $500 a month to reach that seven figure payday by age 55. Wait until you're 30 though and you'll need to deposit $900 a month and starting at 35 means investing $1,400 a month. Now I don't want you to get discouraged if you can't invest that much each month. And picking that random million dollar goal and at age 55 really doesn't mean anything. Whether you get to that million dollar portfolio later or get to an amount that means financial freedom to you, it's all about getting started and following a plan. So we're gonna start here with setting up an emergency fund of $2,000 in savings. Now that should be enough to cover most unexpected expenses. And then you're gonna figure out how much you can invest each month, even if it's only $50 a month. Remember, even if you're still paying off debt, I want you to start investing. No matter what your rate is on your debt, get in the habit of putting that $50 into your investment account each and every month. Okay, the tragic fact is that a lot of people are never gonna be fully out of debt, okay? Everyone though, God willing, is gonna to get to the point where they can't or don't wanna work anymore. So even if you never get beyond that $50 each month into the investing account, it can still grow and become a solid nest egg by 60 or 65 and you'll be glad you did. Next, we're gonna decide how much you want in each of these three asset classes and those alternative investments that we talked about. For most millennials, you'll probably want between 60 to 70% in stocks, so 20% in real estate and then the rest in bonds. 
Now, if you're planning to invest in some of those other investments that we talked about, like futures or Bitcoin or just any alternative investment, I'd put no more than 10% of your total wealth here. Uh, these are extremely risky investments, but you can also produce extremely high returns. So it doesn't take much of your money to really juice that total return on your portfolio. If you go with just 10% of these, maybe you take that 5% out of stocks and 5% out of your real estate uh, investments, but I'd leave that bond por portion really as it is. For the rest of the plan, I've got a step-by-step -step to learn the different types of stocks as well as some strategies that you can use to pick investments. Click on the video to the right for that 12-month plan and a $1,000 portfolio by year end. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.